79. He was 16 and 13 that year. Again, Washington squares, lays it down cleanly. Hargrove to second. They get the lead runner. Well, now there's an advantage of the synthetic surface because when you bunt it too hard, it's going to get to the fielder quickly. And Hargrove's judgment helped by Naha Rodney, who can see clearly at second base. He told Mike, yeah, you've got time. Try to get him. They also took advantage of the fact that Laudner, the catcher, is not a fast man, and everything worked out just fine. So they get the lead runner, and the Twins with one on, one out situation. And Milbourne looking at a called strike. Larry Milbourne, a switch hitter, batting from the right side against the southpaw Rick Waits tonight. One for two in the ball game, singled to center, tapped out to Mike Hargrove. Washington with the lead. Well hit ball. Right center. Hayes on his horse. He's there and he makes the play. That ball hung in the air. Von Hayes has played very well in right field. He has had some chances out of the cloth and has been equal to the task. In fact, has caught up with everything that's come his way. Dan Spilner, Eddie Glenn warming up for the Indians. There's two men out in the sixth inning with one man aboard for Minnesota and Tom Brunanski stepping in, a dangerous young hitter. Just missed low. There's Glenn, the lefty. And Dan Spilner. You're watching Indians baseball on Channel 43, WAB television, serving Lorraine and Cleveland, Bruce Drennan and Joe Tate from the Metro Dome in Minneapolis. That foul ball makes the count with ball and a strike. But Tom Brunanski, who's 0 for 2 in the game, got caught looking and flied to right. So Eddie Glenn in the bullpen. He took a tumble in the dugout last night. Might have really hurt himself. And as Bruce was telling you last night, the only area in which spikes are a real danger is in the bull in the dugout itself, where the rubberized surface turns into concrete. That's where Glenn went down last night. 1-1 pitch, line drive, left field, base hit. In front of Charbonneau, he had to wait for it because it will take such a high bounce off this turf. And now the Twins have base runners at first and second with two men gone for Kent Herbeck. Now that's Brunanski at his best. Good, solid line drive hitter. That is the third hit off Rick Waits and this is the first time tonight the Twins have had more than one base runner on in an inning and look out for this guy. Very strong Kent Herbick looks at a pitch missing low and inside ball one. As Joe mentioned about the spikes there are only two Indian players tonight that are wearing rubber soles that is Rick Manning and Joe Charbonneau the rest of the players are wearing spikes. Big swing and a miss Waits blew it by him. Herbick, 6'4", 215. He's a local boy. He's from Minneapolis. And a most eligible bachelor, girls. Swings at a high when he was jammed with the pitch, and he fouled it back. Two on, two out. We're in the sixth. Tribe holding on to a slim one-zip lead. The Dan's winning the first two games of this series. Have won three in a row trying to sweep for the first time this year. Ball, two strikes, pitch to Herbick. Lined but fouled into the stands, a hot shot. People from Minneapolis, St. Paul, very wisely letting that one get out and into the chairs with no one trying to stop it. Mm. Now, they may have a problem here. you got to feel for the fans. This place in Milwaukee, known for their tailgating, and they have such a, they don't have any parking here. For football specifically, those fans won't be able to tailgate anymore. Here's the one-two pitch. Little looper left field. That's going to bounce in there for a base hit. Charbonneau's going to wait for the ball, and it's a brand new ball game. It's all tied up at one apiece. Herbick gets the RBI. That's his 27th of the year. The fourth base hit off Rick Waits. One to one. He really didn't even make great contact, Joe. Just a little looper. 
There's a fella that you figure can put one up on the roof if necessary, and he bloops a hit into left field that ties the ball game. Now, with two outs, Waits must concern himself in holding the game as a tie rather than relinquishing the lead. Jesus Vega, 0 for 2, line to center, pop to short. Well hit ball to right. Hayes going back, back. He makes the catch, a fantastic catch for Von Hayes, and the Indians are out of the inning. Wow, what a grab by Hayes. One run. Couple of base hits, no errors. Two runners left as you watch the spectacular play by Von Hayes. We've completed six to score. Minnesota one, Cleveland one. Top of the seventh inning and back to Joe Tate. Hayes Manning and Naharadne against Terry Felton. Von tonight is lined to right and fly to right and turned in a fine defensive play to get out of that sixth inning. Count goes to ball two. A 1 1 tie. We are in the seventh. The crack of the bat, Joe. I did not think that Hayes would be able to track that one down. A spectacular play. Now the count goes to two and one. Tom Brennan has replaced Spilner and Glenn in the bullpen for the Cleveland Indians down the right field line. It didn't appear that if Vaughn had not gloved the ball that it would have gone over the fence. The replay didn't appear like it would have cleared. Three and one, but it would have cost two runs. Turn right. One one tie in the top of the seventh. Foul back to the screen and we'll have action now in the bullpen for the Minnesota Twins. Ron Davis. Former Yankees going to start loosening up. Watch this again, fans. What a marvelous play by the youngster Von Hayes. Boy, it'd have been close to clearing. 3 2 pitch to Hayes. Right back below us hits the facing of the press box and goes down into the chairs. Ron Davis, the relief pitcher who came from the Yankees, who spoke out against the Twins organization when they made the Corbett deal with the California Angels, said that the organization was stupid. <laughs> that one is out of play. Said he's getting paid big money and that he will perform at 110% every time he's called upon, but he still says that it was dumb, dumb, dumb. Toronto seven to nothing over the Yankees in the seventh Texas four to three over Baltimore in the sixth Kansas City three to one over the White Sox in the fourth Oakland three to one over Milwaukee in the fifth three two pitch base hit past Herbick into right field Von Hayes comes up with his first hit on the Indians seventh and the first hit off Terry Felton. Von being able to pull the ball here. Had to reach out a bit for that pitch. Nice attempt for it by Vega. Rick Manning lined to center field to win the second inning and single to right field and was caught stealing in the fifth. Rick hitting 279. 5,188 the paid attendance here tonight. 5,802 total in the house. Hayes goes. Laudner throws. Washington puts the tag on Hayes for the out. That's a good call. They had him. The throw was on the first base side of second base. Von Hayes diving head first was tagged before he got his hand on the bag. Here's the replay. Good call. One out with a strike one count on Manning. One ball, one strike. Up the middle to Milburn. Two outs. Bill Naharadne, the catcher, has bounced a short pop to right. Ron Hassey sideline tonight 
with a stiffness in his back. Tom Brennan continues to work in the bullpen for the Cleveland Indians down the right field side. And Ron Davis staying ready in the Minnesota bullpen. There's the gray flamingo. What a performance he gave in Chicago, his hometown, in relief the other night. Strike one to Naharadne. He was brilliant as it, he retired 12 men in a row before giving up a base hit. One ball, one strike. Two strikes. Felton last year with Toledo was seven and eleven with a 4.19 ERA. Struck out 99 men in 131 innings. Pop up. Laudner, the catcher. Sides retired. No runs and a hit. Nobody left. The end of six and one half innings. It is Minnesota and Cleveland 1-1. Ward and Gandy in the seventh inning for the Minnesota Twins. Brennan has been joined by Dan Spillner in the bullpen. Now Eddie Glenn is walking down there. They only have room for two on the mound, so Brennan may well be sitting down. Yep. Glenn is going to take Brennan's spot of the bullpen. And Hatcher sends one a long way to center field. Manning one out. Mm. Headed back for the wall. You do not hit them much farther and keep them inside this place. Gary Ward is lined to center field, bounce to the shortstop. Traveling secretary Mike Seggy wants us to inform family and friends meeting ball players of the Indians. Upon return at Cleveland Hopkins, we will be back at Hopkins three and one half hours after the conclusion of the ball game upstairs on the right. One ball, one strike, and one out. Rick Waits putting together his finest performance of the season thus far. Ward drives one down the right field line. It is fading foul. And the count now at one ball, two strikes. A 1-1 tie. The Indians one run on seven hits. The Twins one run on four. Indians had a great opportunity to break the game open in the sixth inning. They loaded the bases with two out. Charbonneau bounced to third to get out of that situation with no run scoring. Then the Twins came back and scored a run on a walk fielder's choice and a single by Bernanski and another single by Herbick. There's Eddie Glenn with Spillner in the bullpen for the Cleveland Indians. We're in the seventh inning. The third ball evens things up at two and two. Final in the National League. Cincinnati shut out Philadelphia two to nothing behind Soto. He's now four and one. Krukow suffered the defeat. He's now four and three. Two two pitch. Bannister to Hargrove. Two outs. Struck out, fly deep to right. New York, New York leads Atlanta, Joe. Pardon me, six to four. That ball game is going into the bottom of the ninth inning in Atlanta. They tell us in Chicago, Greg Luzinski has just homered for the White Sox, and that the fog is so heavy at Comiskey Park right now they could not see the center field scoreboard when all the lights started to flash. Wow, it sounds like with us in Toronto last year. Jerry Dobzinski flags down Gaetti's line drive, and it's three up, three down. The eighth is next. The game is still tied at one. Dobzinski.
Kowalski leads off of the eighth inning and takes ball one. Dibber has lined to center, bounced to third. One one time, the top of the eighth inning. Friday night, the White Sox at the stadium with the Indians at 7:35 with fireworks to follow. There'll be three fireworks dates this season. Friday night and then July 3rd when the Yankees are in town. And on September the 3rd, Toronto, all brought to you by J.B. Robinson Jewelers and WMMS Radio. Ball three to Dubzinski. Texas has overtaken Baltimore. They now lead five to three at the end of six in Texas. Dibber walks to start the eighth. First time a leadoff man walked. It led to a run. Bannister walked in the sixth inning with one out, got as far as third when the Indians loaded him up, and now the third walk of the ball game, and the first by Felton. Also sends Ron Davis into the bullpen with Laudner, Herbick, and Felton meeting on the mound. Toronto leads New York seven to nothing. That is at the end of six and a half. There's Yankee Davis. Stadium. Bannister is fly to right, fly to center, and walk. Hitting 221. Eighth inning, a 1 1 tie at the Metrodome. He showed bunt, and got a very good look at the baseball that was right up around his chin. Terry Felton. 6 2, 185. Ball two. Hunger week at the stadium, June 14th to the 20th, as manager Billy Gardner is going to the mound. He has Davis ready in the bullpen. Felton has encountered control trouble here in the eighth inning. That's going to be all. Yep, Gardner is going to replace Felton with Ron Davis. Cleveland Indians wives will be collecting cans of food during the Detroit and Boston series at the stadium June 14th to the 20th. The collection conducted for various hunger centers throughout Cuyahoga County. Commencing one hour before these games, collection stations will be set up at gates A, B, and D, and each person donating four cans of food will receive an autographed photo of an Indian and a ticket to the Robin Hood Ball. We'll tell you all about Ron Davis right after we take this time out. Coming Monday, June 7th. No man that calls himself an Irishman can live as a slave. The dramatic beginning of a 13-hour Cleveland television premiere. I'm not too proud to be a servant, but I won't be a whore. Against the Wind on Channel 43. Coming Sunday, May the 30th at 2.05 when the Indians entertain Chicago. It's Baseball Card Day, courtesy of Wheaties. First 15,000 kids, 14 and under, will receive a set of Cleveland Indians baseball cards. There'll be 10 cards in a set, and there will be two more giveaway dates for sets to complete the series. Those dates will be June 19th and July 16th, all courtesy of Wheaties. Baseball Card Day this coming Sunday at the stadium. All right, Ron Davis coming in. Formerly with New York, 6'4", 205. Ron Davis is making his 18th appearance of the season for the Twins. He has pitched in 29 and a third innings, giving up 13 runs all earned, 27 base hits, giving up the long ball like everybody else on their staff. Davis has given up five homers, 10 walks. He has 29 strikeouts. One loss record is at 1-3, and three, the ERA 3.99, and he's got three saves. That leads their staff. Bannister has a 2-0 count. If he walks, the walk belongs to Felton. He's still showing bunt, but the count now goes to 3-0. Last season, Davis was 4-5 with New York. Year before, he was 9-3 with a 2.95 ERA. Ball four. Put 
Stewart. Runners at first and at second with nobody out. Davis chatting with the third baseman, Gary Gaiti. And it brings up Toby Hera. Toby hitting 390. He is two for two tonight, plus a walk. He scored the only run for the Indians back in the fourth inning. What a great spot for Toby to deliver here. He's got a 448 batting average with runners in scoring position. Wow. He shows bunt, takes ball one. Davis started 1979 with Columbus, then was brought up to the Yankees. He was 14 and two for New York, 2.86 ERA and nine saves. In his long career, Toby Harris hitting 284 against Minnesota with 23 homers and 85 runs batted in. That will not produce anything except an out. Ron Washington, the shortstop, grabs it. I mean, it's tried to cross him up that time. The Twins were still looking bunt, and Toby swung away. Mike Hargrove tonight is one for three. Banged into a double play in the first inning. Single to set up the Indians' run in the fourth, and then fly to left field in the sixth. A 1-1 tie. We're in the eighth inning. Dubzinski at second. Bannister at first. They both walked. Brennan continuing to stay active in the Indians bullpen. Strike one. Davis has made the all-star team once. That was in 81. a fair ball to Herbick. He'll go out to Washington to get Bannister back to first. Not in time to get Hargrove. Dubzinski at third. Hargrove at first. Two outs. Boy, Mike, not a fast base runner, was giving it all he had to avoid the double play there. Would have gotten the Twins out of the inning. Watch it again. Pretty hard hit grounder, too. Well, that leaves it up to Andre Horton. Andre tonight is two for three, hitting 323. Stee right one. Good cut. Dubzinski at third, Hargrove at first, two outs of the eighth. Ron Davis, the third Minnesota pitcher. It's been Jackson, Felton, and Davis. One on one. Fans wanted a called strike. It was close. The Mets beat Atlanta six to four. Two strikes. Again, a very good cut by Andre Thornton, but Davis blew it by him. Charbonneau would be next. That's all. No runs, no hits, two walks, two left. The end of seven and one half innings. Cleveland one, Minnesota one. Miguel De Lone has taken over for Charbonneau in left field for the Indians. He'll bat in Joe's spot. And Dan Spilner has been brought into the ball game. 30 year old, 6'1, 190, taking over for Rick Waits. Great performance for Waits, best of the season. Spilner making his 18th appearance of the year. He's pitching 35 and two thirds innings. He has not given up a home run. He's got a one loss record of 2 and 4 with a 2.27 ERA and three saves. 
Timmy Laudner, the catcher in the eighth inning. Strike one. Laudner tonight, a double and a walk. Batting average of 182. One ball, one strike. Waits won seven innings, gave up one run, four base hits, walked to batter, struck out three. One ball, two strikes. Encouraging performance tonight for lefty Rick Waits. Right at Toby Harrow, the line drive is the first out of the eighth inning. Right at him. Top of the order, Ron Washington, the shortstop, has struck out, bounced to third, and been saved for the fielder's choice. He scored the Twins run in the sixth inning when Herbick singled him home. Ball one. Washington hitting 316 as he stands at home plate. down by Spillner to Hargrove for the second out. Good fielding play by the Indian pitcher. That ball was hit pretty hard. It may have gone through the box for a single. Larry Milburn, a switch hitter, swings around to the left side against Dan Spillner. He's 1-4-3 tonight. And Hargrove does a nice job and beats Milbourne to the bag, and the side is gone in order of the eighth. The ninth is next, and it is still Cleveland 1, Minnesota 1. Off day tomorrow, and then the Indians will open up a weekend series against the Chicago White Sox Friday night, with 7.35 being the starting time, and fireworks following the ball game, courtesy of J.B. Robinson Jewelers, and WMMS Radio. That's Friday night. Those some of the private loges that are featured here at the Metro Dome, and they totally go around the entire stadium inside here. Private loges that are used for both baseball and the upcoming football season. Miguel Delaney will bat for the first time, having replaced Charbonneau in left field. He's hitting 219 with six RBIs and takes strike one. DLNA in the leadoff spot on Monday night went two for five, drove in a run, and scored twice. And DLNA did not play in last night's game. Foul back. Two strikes. A 1 1 tie, and we are in the ninth at Minnesota. Boy, there's a very young fan. a foul ball. Yeah, it hit his bat twice, I think. Yes, it did. Ron Davis, number 39 there, who had performed in the shadows of Goose Gossage, the overpowering reliever for the New York Yankees. Davis was the long man and then would turn things over to Gossage in either the eighth or ninth. They made quite a combination, but when the Yankees got Shane Raleigh, he felt that they that Davis was expendable. The LNA strikes out. He went fishing for it. Really had to reach out. That is the second strikeout for Davis. Von Hayes is lined to right, fly to right, single to right. And after the hit, he was caught stealing for only the third time in 15 tries. Strike one. Boy, Hayes isn't going to see a better pitch than that. One ball, one strike. We're in the ninth. The Indians and the Twins are tied at one. The Indians picked up a run in the fourth on Harris walk Hargrove single and a double play ball 
And the Twins came back on a walk fielder's choice and a hit by Herbig. There she goes! Forget that one, it is long gone. Hitting the facing of the upper deck in right high over those seats and Bon Hayes has given the Indians a two to one lead in the ninth with a colossal clout that would have been a home run anywhere in the American League. Boy, am I glad to say that I was wrong. Ron Davis did show Von Hayes another beautiful pitch. In fact, he grooved this one. It was fat, up high. Hayes was able to pull it, and as Joe said, he really creamed it. Wow. That's like the, one of those homers we were describing that Herbick has hit here at the new Metrodome ball actually landed higher than those seats. Now the Indians with a two to one lead. Davis has now coughed up six home runs. And a strike one to Rick Manning. Manning one for three tonight with a base hit back of the fifth inning. One one. I wish the fans could have seen the expression on Davis's face after he had given up the home run and he knew it was gone. He was very disgusted with himself for grooving that one to Bond. And they drive to left. Hatcher will have to flag it down, and he can't play it off the carpet. And Manning is under a full head of steam. Hatcher's throw to third. Safe on the relay. Tossed by the second baseman or the shortstop, Washington. Triple for Manning. That's the thing about this turf. Once you commit yourself as an outfielder on a ball and you guess wrong, you're in trouble because it skips so quickly off of this turf. You can see Hatcher was undecided whether to try to make a shoestring catch or to back off and let it bounce once. As a result, it quickly got by him. Manning's second triple of the year. Hatcher's throw went to the shortstop Washington who was standing next to Milbourne and then Washington fired it on to third base. But not in time. Against the drawn in infield Naharadny at bat ball one. Naha tonight 0 for 3. Out of play. One ball, one strike. Indians with a two to one lead of the ninth as Von Hayes has clouted number four. Indians as a team now, 36 home runs on the year. And their pitching staff has yielded only 26. One ball, two strikes. The Twins have hit 42, but they have yielded 66. Balls, two strikes. San Diego has taken a one zip lead on the Cubs. That ball game in the bottom of the second inning at San Diego. And they are scoreless in Houston, Montreal, and the Astros. No score in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nahar Rodney strikes out. Third strikeout for Davis. That'll leave it up to Dubzinski. Nahar Rodney went for a bad one. That one dipped down low out of the strike zone. Dubzinski with a line drive to center, a bouncer to third, and a walk. As you watch Naha fail to find it. Manning at third base, two outs. Strike one. Dubzinski hitting 367 with men in scoring position, 11 for 30, accounting for 12 RBIs. On that average, however, has been on the decline of late. As he stands at home plate, Dubzinski's batting average down to 256. Manning with a triple, still a third with two outs. Two balls and a strike. It's funny, his batting average has gone down, but he's performed a lot better defensively. When he was hot with the stick, he was making errors in the field. Now it's just the reverse. Two balls, two strikes. A lot of steam on that pitch by Davis. Gonna be very upset with himself for grooming that one to Von Hayes. 
In the White Sox series, John Denny against Steve Prout Friday night, Rick Sutcliffe against Lamar Hoyt on Saturday afternoon, and Lenny Barker against Dennis Lamp or Rich Dodson on Sunday. Budzinski is gone. Davis strikes out the side, but the Indians still take the lead. One run, two hits, going to the last of the night. The Indians, two, the Twins, one. The qualities of the Sanyo video recorder are much like the qualities of a fine athlete, lean of body, with an economy of movement, precision, control, endurance. The equation of attributes that is as close to perfection as humanly possible. The Sanyo video recorder, a world-class performer. Sanyo selected the official video products of the Los Angeles 1984 Olympics. Spilmer isn't going after a save here as the ball game moves at the bottom of the ninth inning. He's going after the win tonight. He's two and four. Bullpen action for the Indians just in case. Glenn and the right-hander Eddie Whitsitt. Spilmer will be facing some awfully tough hitters. Certainly will. Brunanski, Herbick, and Vega. Brunanski tonight is one for three. His hit was instrumental in the Twins' run of the sixth. Strike one. Brunanski hitting 250. Avon Hayes home run, the difference in this game, two to one in the ninth. One ball, one strike. Rick Waits pitched seven very effective innings tonight, giving up one run on four hits, struck out three, walked one. Up the middle, off the mound, grabbed by Dobzinski, got him. Good play by Dobzinski. Fantastic play because it was such a difficult pickup. That ball hit the mound. It was scooting out through the box. Hit off the end of the bat by Brunanski. There it bounces off the mound. That slows it down enough so Dibber could get to it. Got that short, tricky hop and nailed his man. Big out. Ken Herbick, one for three, had an RBI single in the sixth. Out of play to the left, strike one. Herbick hitting 307. We have not seen this young man go deep as yet, but everybody you talk to with the Twins say at any moment, kawam, strike two. And he yeah. was trying to do it right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Randy Johnson has come on deck to bat for Vega. One two count pitch to Herbick. Wow. Still one and two. There's Randy Jansen, who's been DHing of late. 